happens after you've replaced your converter, you were wise, you got the oxygen sensors, and these are things you can do yourself. Right. Okay. You might want to look at the throttle position sensor. That's a possibility, but I have a feeling that it sounds like the catalytic converter from what you've told me. Right. Great, Thank Beverly. Thank you so much. Thank you, Beverly. Good luck to you. Thank you. Steve, nothing like taking care of an emissions problem. And protecting the environment, obviously. That's one of the great benefits and good performance from your vehicle. And Beverly, if your catalytic converter were beginning to get clogged up, as Lauren was talking about, you'd also see a performance reduction because that restricts the exhaust. So uh, that O2 sensor sounds like it may be the culprit as well. Now, if you want to get your questions answered like Beverly, call our toll-free number. It's 866-TALK-TO-DIY. We'll be right back. Stay with us. supplies and advice you need to keep your car running right there's no better place than AutoZone. I've been a hog farmer all my life but I ain't never seen anything like these Fram air hogs. Yeah! <laughs> Crazy critters scaring the chickens and the missus too to be honest. Mind you folks can't wait to get their hands on them. <laughs> The Fram Air Hog High Performance Air Filter, designed to allow more airflow for increased acceleration and horsepower. They breathe in, you peel out. Fram Air Hog, hog the road. Only Oust Air Sanitizer kills odor-causing bacteria in the air. I thought Lysol was an air sanitizer. It's true. Lysol works on surfaces, but it's not meant for the air. Only Oust Air Sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of odor-causing bacteria in the air. Oust is an air sanitizer. It doesn't just cover up the odors. It eliminates them. Spray the Oust spray, and it eliminates whatever odor there was. It smells really clean. I think it's great. Get odor-causing bacteria out with Oust Air Sanitizer. S.C. E. Johnson, a family company. I love it. I don't like bathroom odors of any sort. Now there's a new Oust Air Sanitizer made just for the bathroom. One finger, two times. Kills airborne odor-causing bacteria quick and easy. It's a no-brainer. This is awesome. New Oust Bathroom Air Sanitizer. What's the matter, girl? Is Marty in trouble? <laughs> you need a hatchet? <laughs> you need a, a, a crowbar? Wall paint? <laughs> need help choosing a paint color? Mandy? We've got thousands of colors and all the advice you'll need. Ace, the helpful place. Two teams going head to head. A fully stocked tool warehouse. One project. And only eight hours to do it. Warehouse Warriors. One, two, three, back again! Hold on to your drawers. We're locking the doors. Maybe they won't notice it. <laughs> You'll never make it. We've got you, babe. Warehouse Warriors. Tonight at 7 Eastern on DIY. I am so glad this is over. <laughs> Thinking about refinancing your home? Wondering how or where? We recommend instead that you think about who. Call AmeriQuest now. You'll get your own personal loan specialist. Whenever you call me, I'll be there. Whenever you want me, I'll be there. Someone who knows you are more than your credit score. You'll get custom tailored loan options, like paying off those high interest credit cards, and lowering your monthly payments. And you'll have someone to support you from start to finish. We even do the paperwork. Whenever you call me, I'll be there. Whenever you need me, I'll be there. For a completely I'll different refinancing experience, call 1-800-AmeriQuest now or go to AmeriQuest.com. AmeriQuest, the company that knows you are more. Welcome back to Talk to DIY. I'm Lauren Fix. Thanks for getting all of your automotive questions to us. I'm Steve Ford. Now, really, thanks for the questions. We've been answering a bunch of them so far, and we still have some time left, so let's go on to the next one. So let's get back to the phone. Katrina from Ranger, West Virginia, is waiting patiently. Hi, Katrina. What's your question? 
Hello. Um, I have a 1991 Chevy S10 Blazer, and we recently changed the head gasket on it, and now it is blowing oil up through the dipstick. How can I fix it? Katrina, how many miles are on your vehicle? Uh, right around 170,000. Okay, well right there I've got a couple of concerns. I was under the impression that there might be something else to think about. Tell you what we'll do. Let's start with uh, just the, the condition you've talked about. You replace the cylinder head gaskets. This is not the exact same engine as yours, but it's similar. Now if we look at the cylinder head gasket right here, uh, you replaced it on both sides of the engine or just one side? Both. Okay. Uh, the reason for the, the replacement of the gaskets was what? Uh, it, they started leaking. Okay, now that by itself gets me suspicious about the condition of the cylinder heads because there may have been a warped cylinder head or the engine may have been overheated. Was the engine overheated before you replaced the cylinder head gaskets? No. Okay. Uh, well, then it just they over fatigue or over time, I want to say, they can get fatigued and they can uh, break down and you can have a blown head gasket that's, that way, which is what it sounds like you're, you're dealing with in your situation. Now... Uh, the head gasket does have a very remote potential to blow out so, so that combustion pressure could go into what's called the oil galley, this area underneath, underneath the uh, intake manifold where uh, combustion pressure could leak out. Now, I'm thinking, even as I say that, that's real remote. So let me go to some other possibilities. First of all, with 175,000 miles on your engine, Katrina, what I'm thinking is you might have worn rings. And if you have worn rings, what those do is the rings serve to keep combustion gases pressurized inside the combustion chamber. Do you understand that part? Yes. Okay, so if you know what the rings do, then you can imagine that after 175,000 miles, they've gone up and down those cylinder walls millions of times, literally, and they wear down and don't seal so well. When they don't seal well, what happens is the combustion gases are allowed to leak around the piston, around the side of the piston, into the crankcase where they build up pressure. And that, that pressure can end up causing uh, the excess crankcase gases to try to push their way out the dipstick tube. Now, there's another possibility. You could have, a, a, like I said, summarizing here, cylinder head gasket could leak into the oil galley, number one. Number two, you could have worn rings. And then third, you could have what is called a, pr a positive crankcase ventilation valve that is, is clogged up. Now, the positive cr crankcase ventilation valve is part of the closed crankcase emission system to prevent crankcase gases from going into the atmosphere. If that valve got clogged up and it were plugged into the, uh, the uh, valve cover, what's going to happen is the crankcase gases are going to try to find a way out besides where they'd normally go through that valve, and that could be the oil dipstick, which is going to be what you're dealing with. So those are the three possibilities for you. Uh, head gasket maybe again, not very likely. Worn rings, good probability. Check for compression test yourself if you know how to do it or take it to a technician. Last, check the PCV valve. That's an in inexpensive and simple fix. That may be the source of your dilemma. So, Katrina, good luck with that, and thank you for your call. Thank you. Okay. And uh, cars can be such a mystery, Lauren. That's why we're here, Steve. We answer those mysteries. We sort of solve those problems. All right, there's still time for another quick question, and it's an email from Vish in Agora Hills, California. Vish writes, I can't figure out where the oil filter is for my 2002 Camry V6. The owner's manual is no help. I usually do my own oil change for my older Nissan and Toyota pickup. Is it much different for the 2002 Camry? Do I need any special tools? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Vish, well, let me show you some cool tools and answer your question at the same time. First, do you need any special tools? No, you don't. I think the problem is they try to make these engines so pretty when you pop the hood, you get to see the brand or the model, but you don't get to see the engine, which is what we need to see. So you want to take that plastic cover off the top. Many vehicles are using that now to make it look nice. However, you can't see the oil filter. Now, your oil filter is a normal oil filter. How you find is you'd stand in the front of the car, but right like where the radiator is, and look straight down. And when you look straight down, you're going to see this oil filter there, and you're going to need to remove it with just a standard tool. Now, this is just a regular standard tool you use. It's a band that goes around. It's a band clamp design, and it goes right around the filter. You pull it tight for your application, so you could use this for your trucks, too. And then you just turn it as needed. Keep in mind, this is a great tool to have when you have more than one vehicle, so you don't have to carry a bunch of different oil filter wrenches. So that would get you going in that application. Now, another tip is you don't want to over-tighten that filter that was recommended to us by Toyota for the Camry, and we appreciate your question. Thank you very much. Now, when we come back, we'll continue on our electrical theme and give you an overview of exactly how your car's electrical system works. Auto 101 is next when Talk to DIY returns.
Ty Brian McGiven sent these photos of his 1954 F-100 pickup. This New Orleans native completely rebuilt this truck using original parts and used Louisiana heart pine for his truck bed. If you'd like to see your vehicle featured on our show, go to DIYNet.com and link to the Talk to DIY Automotive show page for more information. off that summer project now and put off paying for it at the Home Depot. The one place with all the tools, supplies, and know-how for any project this summer. Now through July 5th, get no payments, no interest for 12 months on purchases of $2.99 or more store-wide with your Home Depot or Expo consumer credit card. Also right now, get free delivery on appliances. Make the most of your summer and your summer projects. You can only at the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. With even more sweet and tangy fruit in Kellogg's Fruit Harvest Strawberry Blueberry, even the milk can't wait. Kellogg's Fruit Harvest Cereal, now with 10% more fruit. Only Oust air sanitizer kills odor-causing bacteria in the air. I mostly sprayed Lysol in the air. I thought Lysol was an air sanitizer. It's true. Lysol works on surfaces, but it's not meant for the air. Only Oust air sanitizer kills 99.9% .9 of odor-causing bacteria in the air. My daughter Carly is like a tomboy, and her clothes are stinky and gross. A little spray right away. It smells great. Just fresh. Get odor-causing bacteria out with Oust air sanitizer. S.E. Johnson, a family company. Oust gets rid of the odors, doesn't mask the odors. I don't like bathroom odors of any sort. Now there's a new Oust Air Sanitizer made just for the bathroom. One finger, two times. Kills airborne odor-causing bacteria quick and easy. It's a no-brainer. This is awesome. New Oust Bathroom Air Sanitizer. Nothing compares to the soothing, tranquil water, the lush, tropical landscape, and the look on your neighbor's face. When you win HGTV's Outdoor Oasis Sweepstakes and transform your yard, win $100,000 in a trip for two to Australia. Brought to you by Outback Steakhouse, Terminix, and these national sponsors. Enter at HGTV.com or by mail. Bob, could you call your birds? Hello, welcome back to Talk to DIY. We've had a great time today answering your automotive questions, including all of your electrical problems. And we're not finished yet. It's time for Automotive 101, an entry-level course on your vehicle and how all its systems operate. Okay, class is now in session, and today we're looking at your vehicle's electrical components and how they work together. Your electrical system is quite complicated, which is why we like to break it down, make it nice and simple to start, and we'll build up from there by showing you this animation. This will show you how the system works in its basic form. You put the key in the ignition, and when you turn the ignition, it sends a signal to the battery, which then sends power out to the starter. Now, when the starter gets that power, it turns over, and through mechanical energy, it then will start your engine. Now, once your engine is started and it's running, power through the distributor is sending signal to the spark plug, which fires in each individual cylinder of your engine. Now, mechanical energy will turn that alternator, and the alternator will then electrically recharge the battery. And now you've got a nice closed-loop system. Yeah, it's like a closed loop of water going all the way around the vehicle because it is water in effect. Electricity flows, water flows. Very similar analogy, sort of like water going from the mountains on a river down to the ocean. And that pressure of the water is similar to the pressure of electrons starting with a storage battery, which is like a reservoir, like a dam where the water is stored in a dam. Same thing, there's pressure inside the battery pushing those electrons out to various components. Now all the components are protected by fuses, a protection device here, the fuse panel. The electricity goes to the fuse panel first so that if there's ever an overcurrent and the wires are getting hot, rather than starting a fire, the fuse blows. Now from there, the electricity is distributed to your various components, but of course it also...